Hey guys, how have you been? So, um, we are the Cloudwalk team here. Uh, we'd like to say something about uh, what we are doing with MRUB and payments. So, to be clear, not cut all the works in Cloudwalk. <laughs> uh, so, my name is Thiago Scaloni. I'm an I'm a, a, a active guy on the Brazilian community. And so, uh, so one of my passions is Ruby, is Ruby and beers and beer. So, uh, uh, one, uh, uh, let me go back. So, uh, one another thing is my girlfriend. So I met her on uh, Ruby Conf, and so because that uh, Ruby give to me not only a, a, a car here, but to uh, the girl of my life. So Ruby is really important to me. So he, she's a programmer too, uh, an opportunity, a .NET programmer. But uh, you know, uh, it, it happens in the best, the best families, yes? So I'm here with my, my coworker, my brother, Daniel Rodriguez. Thank you, Chago. Well, I'm Daniel. I am a JavaScript developer, I'm here Mostly because, uh, as it turns out, in most careers, you end up uh, diverting from your current spectrum. And I ended up working with MRuby a lot now with Thiago. And, and well, a, a little disclaimer here. Uh, besides my username, who is related, was, is similar to Sasseta so uh, it's not the same. It's not actually related. So I'm very sorry for that. Uh, now let's continue with Thiago. So guys, uh, the first thing I'd like to say is thank you for everyone who supported us here. We, uh, so Japan uh, was a, uh, a really great experience. Uh, uh, we, we was really good receive, uh, recipient here. So thank you for Sasada-san for the support. Uh, Urab san for, for the support too. Uh, you are amazing guys. Japan uh, will be in my heart. <laughs> for a long time. So um, talk about the CloudWalk uh, problems here. So we, we, have a, 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 we have a platform that we could develop uh, an application uh, for POS and machines, point of sales. Uh. So when we involve POS machines, so uh, uh, we have actually um, the same code. And in, with that code, we could run on each machine we support on our PO in our park. So before I talk about MRuby, I'd like to to define some things. What is embedded system? So we, we could find some definitions on week. We could find some definitions on book on the internet and everything. So I, I like that one. So you can find that on Making Embedded System by Alicia White. So an embedded system is a computer system that you propose build for its application. So when I saw that, I think, man, embedded system is difficult. So most of machines who have work has no OS. Most machines has a, lim a, limited, a limited system calls, no POSIX system mostly, uh, crazy or poorly APIs, and most of them, no one's a C, so that's really difficult. And think, think another problem, let's create a scenario here. Imagine, so you have the, that code, you have your binary, so imagine something like one Mac, two Macs, so you, you upload for your terminal, yes? So imagine you have 10,000 terminal with that code, and imagine you have to you find a bug in that code. How we proceed to update that, that code? So we have to go manually, physically on each terminal and update that code. That, that is a real problem that we, we try to solve. And that problem you can probably, you can find for each terminal we have on the park. So we have a, a different binary for each terminal. So, and not on that, so, so we have a bunch of issues here. Network issues, energy issues, so, Problem on transactions, financial transactions. So that <laughs> that it's a nightmare, yes. So that's what we do on Cloudwalk. We try to solve that. And there's some deals we have in mind here. Uh, it should be easy way to develop and deployment. 
and it should be a, a cross-platform that you can develop payment applications there. So what do you have to do that? So in the past, we have this, this guy. So it's a Windows compiler that runs our old, so our current uh, virtual machine that we call POX XMO, yes? So, so we have actually this, this workflow, so we have to compile on that Windows Windows compiler that is, that is uh, most of uh, uh, clients has uh, Windows to, to develop. So and then update the CloudWalk servers and then we update the ter uh, POS terminals. So the f the first movement we had to solve that to solve what we have today is change the what uh, just change how we compile the code. So. We uh, we create a, an, an IDE that we can compile that code on on the browser. That was a really good improvement in our system. And then uh, so and we were able to 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 develop it directly on the browser, and, and that was a, a really good improvement. So talking about our current runtime, so we have we developed that uh, it we call as I said. POS XMO, so it's a, it's a terrible runtime. So so it's XMO, yes. <laughs> so structure, stack to memory management. So so it, it's, that's terrible. We have to stop with that. We have to improve that. We have to leave it. it we have to leave it. So then, so that is enough. We need we need to move forward. We need uh, to expand. We need to go to mobile. And we need we need to be developer friendly. So thinking on that kind of problem, thinking on, uh, on what do you want, why not use Ruby as uh, uh, as a runtime to to do that? So everyone here probably know Ruby uh, well. So it's beautiful, hacker friendly, semantic, productive, small, yeah. So and, and the best thing the, the, the best thing I like on on Ruby is I really feel rap I really, I really feel happy when I do Ruby. So because that we we should Ruby to 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 update our 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 runtime and and work with. So the first thing <laughs> the first thing you have the first thing you tried is try to develop our uh, our our Ruby runtime. So we try that. So we get lost with ASM codes and other things to trying to to that work. And so I'm glad to say <laughs> it it it, it fails. So we have we had a huge mistake. And so we learned something here. The, sometimes we have some limitation on on what you, what you can do. Yes. So. After that, we decide forget. So let's try the mobile first. The mobile first, yes. Uh, we tried Ruboto. So uh, I don't know if you if you know, but Ruboto is a, is basically JRuby on on Android, yes. So uh, we tried that and wasn't that good. So actually, JRuby coaching don't look at well for that project. Uh, has no community. Uh, and so the first, the first proof of concept we had, we had, we developed it. So it was like 40 seconds to boot. So imagine our clients uh, won't actually buy a our, uh, our, uh, our last model of Samsung. It will be a really small and cheapest Samsung or or Android. Yes. After that. We tried Ruby Motion. Man, Ruby Motion is beautiful. Uh, if you if you would like to develop uh, for iOS and Android, and um, and I, I recommend you to use Ruby Motion. It's beautiful, ahead of time compilation. Everyone knows about that. So uh, probably yesterday uh, <laughs> it would it it was clear. Yes. So. But the problem is back into the, 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 the POS terminals, we cannot port that LLVM code or something. And so we need another thing. We need 
maybe uh, when you think about that, we need a smaller Ruby because we cannot use infertility C Ruby. C Ruby is, 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 has so many dependencies and we cannot use that. So that, in that moment, we knew M Ruby, yes? So I think most of, most of you knows M Ruby. So let me say some good features we have. So resource saving, high portability, write them by code, static gens, uh, NZC code, a really small size, so that's really good, yeah? So, and, and uh, you can find another thing so that will match with our, where we like to, to, to go. So we have mobile Ruby that we could develop applications for, for iOS, and we have some experimental and pro, some experimental project that we, we tried and it works uh, to develop to develop th that application on, on Android, like Jam Ruby and Android. So, back in again for the for the terminals, the first the terminal we tried to implement was the Pax 200. It's a Chinese uh, POS terminal that you can uh, do a, you can do a financial financial transaction. So it's a really good hardware, but uh, so as isn't that a good software, yes? So, so imagine, that's the whole uh, functions we have to, to manipulate uh, files. So for sure, that isn't uh, NZC or even, even uh, that closer, yes? So another thing, uh, we have not support a bunch of of system calls like pipe or fork, so it's a really limited system. We cannot. It's a MIPS, yeah. It's MIPS, but we cannot uh, works with that code, yes. Um, so when we started with the packs, what do we have to do? We need we need to to use something to to help us. So we need to 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 use a, a, a libc to, to integrate with the, the set of functions MRub needs, yeah? So uh, today you have Pax 200 running with Musli. Uh, uh, what is, a, so Musli is a kind of beat for what you, what you need, but it, it's okay, no problem. Uh, maybe we go to a, a light, a light uh, maybe go to a light libc, but, uh, I really recommend when, when you try to to integrate MRuby with some something, maybe you, you could choose some libc to to help you. Thinking uh, on the, uh, on what we have uh, for the our application, so we have this architecture. So uh, it's a Pax. Uh, we have Pax as LS. Uh, so, uh, with the Pax SDK and SDK and Muzzy, uh that we use to to compile MRub core and some MRub gens uh, to to do that. Yes, so we have a, an, an interface called DaFunk that we, we use to 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 com communicate between MRub app that that app uh, where. Uh, our client will develop your, your business and it use the funk to 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 have a a, a a unique interface between all platforms you have uh, all POSs you have yes so basically uh, of uh, all uh, platforms uh, we have this is the uh, this is the architecture yes so OS uh, uh, SDK plus some libc and mrub and mrub james yes so talking about a little bit about the funk uh the funk isn't just for the to have an interface but it's to for that for you need have we need to have the same uh, behavior for each platform so Imagine we have a POS terminal that runs, uh, and that, that attach in a GPS co connection um, by your own way. So that funk is on, isn't only an interface, but, but it's to, uh, a way to, to have the same behavior on, on the old platforms we have, yes? So 
based on everything, everything I said, we have some, some points in mind. Yes? So, color work, Amy Rube framework, need to be hard agnostic. So, we should, we should have a potential to, to, to have the framework on everything you need. Just so we can, uh, you, you can uh, implement that on in your fridge, maybe, why not? Yes, so that should be modular. We, we, sh we should plug and, and plug uh, s uh, the Emiruby genes uh, uh, as we can do with Emiruby, and it should be simple, that we have in mind, yes? So now I will pass for my friend, Daniel, to talk about what we have on the web. Thank you, Shego. Well, it turns out that once that you have an ID in the web that has a real-time interaction between users and you could develop a, a payment application uh, with several users in the same environment without installing anything, and you have a compiler, actually, you also need to have a... Well, eventually, you, you would like to have an emulator because you, you would like to test the application before it reaches the POS terminals. So... Um, we were looking for ways of doing this, and we found that uh, in, the, in the case of MRuby, as it generates a really good LLVM uh, code, we could use MScripton. And fortunately, we didn't have to start from zero. So there are uh, projects out there that, that help us. For example, WebRuby, it's uh, like the, the basic first uh, approach that we, we, we started using. Uh, this person is amazing. I really appreciate the work that he did because based on, on, his, on his projects, we managed to, to build uh, our, our systems. So essentially nowadays for, for our development environment for the, the, the Cloudwell team, uh, to compile, to compile a, a Ruby project, I mean a Ruby project in the web, is as simple as this. We create a new web Ruby object. We compile to a file that source code. That compile to file function is a custom function, but it's not really hard to implement. And finally, we read the bytecode and we deploy to, to the servers. No? So we used to have a, a, a compiler and an emulator uh, for POS XML. So now the challenge is to make the emulator for, for MRuby. Uh, this is actually how it looks, the, the emulator, that's it, the, the, in, the interface. It's mostly like a POS terminal, all right? So uh, here's a simple application. It, it, it has, it has the, the philosophy of the funk. It's, a, it's, a, it's abstracted. It inherits all the device, uh, uh, the device's API. And it has like a main, ma main function, which is the self.call. Uh, this function displays something in the string and then reads a, a character from the keyboard input. And then if, it, if it, the, character, the character happens to be the cancel uh, character, it exits. Otherwise, it's, it keeps displaying the user input. So uh, it, the theoretically, with our, our abstraction, it, it's, to make it run, it's as simple as this. You, you have a, a, an adapter class which has the start function which runs the func, which is the, the, the layer between the, uh, the, the, the POS terminal and the, the application. It also loads some other Ruby, M M Ruby uh, uh, code, which helps to, to complete the API for the, for the given device, the, the given uh, architecture. And finally, it runs the application. Uh, that's in theory. In practice, in the case of the browser, we need to stop we need to be able to control the execution of the applications because if you're running, if you're running a, a, an application that is, a, is intended to work in a, in a terminal, in a browser, uh, you need to be careful because browsers are, are not uh, synchronous. They, they do many operations asynchronously. So in order to, to stop the, the current execution, we use, use Fiber. So in this example, next, we have a, a, a function called read key, which reads uh, uh, from, uh, from the user the keyboard. It, uh, it calls a JavaScript function called the old, in, in the object device, device.read. And uh, we wait. You actually stop the, the, the fiber in fiber.yield. Uh, and then uh, once the JavaScript function in the yellow box uh, executes the, the callback, uh, the, the input is received, and we resume the fiber. Uh, we do this thanks to another <laughs> open source project that helped us to uh, that enlightened us to, to the way of doing these kind of things is is mruby dot uh, mruby uh, slash slash no it's uh, I, I forgot the name it's mruby js <laughs> uh, which uh, you can take a look and you can actually start working with this kind of of ideas 
Uh, but th there are several cons considerations when we're work working with mscripten. mscripten is not a, 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 a like uh, it's not intended to run everything in the browser because it, it, you should write applications cons considering uh, be, being very precautious about memory. So it's not a problem of, of scripting totally. So it's more because our code is not it's not intended to work in the browser uh, because it's intended to work in POS terminals. So uh, one of the the, the recommendations is, is to keep it clean. We we com completely remove the device and the memory and all the objects related to to Web Ruby. Uh, RM script and each time that we run the application, and it, it happens faster than, than, than you might think. Uh, another thing is that if you have to debug something uh, and you can debug it before compiling or during comp compilation or, or in any of those ways, you have to treat with something like this, which are horrible uh, native functions in, in, in JavaScript, which it's very interesting and, and, and it's very uh, uh, <laughs> stressful, but uh, uh, so well, you, you have to know a lot of, about how to, how to handle pointers and, and all the pointers are arithmetic. Maybe you can find a really quick solution. But anyway, another point here is that uh, strings in JavaScript are not entirely, I mean, you cannot trust them, uh, especially for network operations. Uh, you have to be careful. Uh, we use, uh, in cases of some browsers that doesn't support a, a binary arrays or, st or a static arrays, we use uh, JavaScript strings as, uh, as buffers. Uh, but in case of network communications, you have to, to, to uh, translate it to hex, and you can do that on the web, uh, I mean, on the browser, because JavaScript, uh, you have to make it like a, an, an URL string, and it breaks. So it's not good for, for bytecode. So it's, it's uh, essentially, uh, you, you have to make it to translate it to hex if possible, especially in the backend. And, Otherwise, use mRuby to translate it to hex. Otherwise, use, use array strings. It's just a recommendation. And finally, uh, mscript is not thought to work on, on network or on sockets. So you have to override that and use your custom sockets. Um, uh, we actually use a, a mix between a socket.io and a Node.js server. And, and we, we, uh, it, it's completely transparent for the Ruby application, but, but it's, it's kind of tricky because it's like um, Ruby, it de then goes to JavaScript, and then goes to the server. It's crazy. Anyway, so it's, here's a si simple example of writing some, some default, I mean, some, some uh, 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 traditional uh, standard class, for example. It's just a simple example. We, we uh, override the methods, and we call custom JavaScript methods to use it. And finally, you might know that uh, it's not a good idea to stop a browser or to run like an infinite loop in a browser because the whole website stops. And in, in case of Firefox, it breaks. Uh, so you, you need workers. Uh, but there is a problem with workers. You said uh, it, it's not very well implemented across browsers. So in, case, in the case of Chrome, it, it breaks many times. So you have to be careful with that. We, we have right now uh, the emulator and the whole mRuby uh, framework working uh, on ma all major browsers. And in some of them, we use workers. In some others, we don't use workers. So it's a really crazy thing. <laughs> but anyway, so let's have a quick presentation. Can you help me to, to put the ID? So remember that code that I showed you? Uh, we're going to run it on the, on, on the web. So it's the same code. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm not very good with Max. Uh, okay, so it's the same code, uh, and we use uh, it, this is the the IDE. It, it, it actually would uh, you will see another user in, in, interacting, but it, there's no one else here right now. So anyway, we run uh, the emulator. Oh, well, I can do it manually. There, we are going to emulate mRuby. It's as simple as clicking power. It compiles. Here's the bytecode in in base 64. And that, that's the output in the screen. That's the same that we, we could see in the in the in the in the POS terminal. And well, it, it, it would, it's receiving the user input, and especially if if you click cancel some at some point, it breaks. Well, it it, it exits specifically. And now we're going to see another example. This time working on a on a PAX terminal, and that's where my friend Chago comes. So uh, as you see here, so. Uh, Today, when you, when you like to, to upload some code for 
your POS terminal will have some, some flow to follow, yes? But uh, with that, you are, we, could just, uh, we could just run in the browser and check the results and test. That's, that's what we, we, we have here. So, uh, so we are doing uh, with the emulator as a new platform tool. So as a, as a terminal, as, a, as, a, as a, uh, something we have, some platform news, yes. So I'm showing you the the Pax 200 running an, an application here. So let's see the code. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. So what I have here. Uh, so. As can you see here, I have a class, a simple class, and uh, a class method we call call, yes? So I will just clean the, the display, and then uh, I will uh, print uh, some phrase that, so you are here waiting for, to already a press of, of, of button, then you read a card uh, that you can, uh, do a transaction, yes. I will get here the track one of that that's credit that credit card, and you can see that running. So to do that, I use Photo Boot. Everyone will see me now. Okay. So as you are seeing here, everyone say, oh, oh, oh. okay. So how do you think, Sadasan? Oh. Yeah, no, 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 it's okay. So everyone is seeing here, so he's waiting for, it's waiting for, I press the button and try to, to pass the card, yes. So it's running Ruby here. Awesome. <laughs> live demos. I love live demos. Yeah. Okay. I have to use my credit card. Oh, please, please, do not clone my credit card. Please. I have a family. <laughs> okay. So as you see here, so it's data. So have Pax 200 running Emma Ruby and select like back to the presentation. Okay. So what do what do we have in next? So our roadmap is to finish the 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 Emma Ruby on Verifone and Ingenico. So the Verifone and Ingenico have uh, something like 90% of the market share of the the, the terminals, POS terminals. So they have a, a, a so they are a really good machines. Probably you can do better can than PAX. Probably, probably. And so uh, we are finishing our continuous delivery. So we were able to to press compile and on on the browser and. And you can see your application running a terminal in, in seconds. Uh, <clears throat> NFC. So we already have NFC on on Verifone and Genico for the, the POS XMO. Yeah. So we are working to to do that for PAX 202 and, and we integrate with uh, with uh, the solutions we have with, with Verifone and Genico for MRUB2. So uh, everyone knows here the so I watch yeah so it's the, the same technology so that what do we do so we were able to develop your payment application uh, with Emma Ruby uh, and you will be able to to do whatever you want you, you, you could pass a car a, mag a magnetic car and an, an, an MV transaction or NFC with I watch or mobile uh, uh, that's what I we are doing so Thank you guys. So uh, I'd like to invite everyone to, to go to EmmyRubyConf BR so, uh, in next year. Uh, so uh, I, I uh, personally, <laughs> if, you, if you're, anyone would like to go there, I will be there receiving news personally, good, and good as you receiving me here. Thank you for everything. <laughs>